Hello students, myself Dr. Saithi, Team MDS Conquer. Today we are going to discuss about the coronavirus. So, coronavirus also called as COVID-19 is the present prevailing outbreak or the prevailing pandemic disease that has turned the entire world upside down. So, even the layman exactly knows what are the causes, what are the symptoms and even what are the precautions to be taken from being infected. So, this particular presentation emphasizes on the pathogenesis of this dreadful virus which I feel that every doctor should inherently know that. And apart from that, as NEET point of view is also quite important because the next NEET exam few questions can be asked in and around the scenario of this virus. Okay, let's discuss. So, coming to the main structure of this virus. So, it has an envelope and a nucleocaspid like the every other virus has. So, especially this virus has spikes and the spikes or projections are very important for the fusion of this virus to that of the host cell. Especially the spike S which is noted by S uh, uh, helps in the fusion of this virus to that of the host cell. Apart from that, it has a genome which is a single stranded RNA. So, mainly you need to remember the spikes with which it fuses to that of the host cell. Later, the single stranded RNA which is a genomic material for this virus. Okay. So, the origin of this virus actually occurred in the city of Wuhan in China. So, it said that the people in the wet market who consume improperly cooked diet, especially having the animals like bats. So, the virus has been entered or has been uh, initiated from there. Okay, later it has been transmitted from person to person via respiratory droplets. Okay, if the person, infected person is at least uh, less than 3 feet away, then it has more chances of transmission because uh, it's, it is being said that it stays in air for around 3 hours. And also if the infected person touch any object and that object can also transmit the disease. So, that is the reason we have been instructed to stay at least 6 feet away, more than 3 feet away from the infected person. Okay, this has been transmitted uh, from person to person. So, now we have seen many lakhs of people have been infected because the transmission has been occurred because via, uh, it has been occurred via respiratory droplets. Clear? So, next, uh, coming to the simple pathogenesis. So, like any other virus, the spikes goes and fuses to that of the host cell ok later when it in, it enters inside and it releases its genome that is single stranded RNA. This goes and attacks the ribosomes of the host cell after which it starts replicating. So, entire process of replication occurs by via enzyme which is called as RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So, we know the, R, uh, the replication occurs by transcription. So, here the RNA dependent RNA polymerase is the enzyme mainly responsible for that. Later, it again produces after the replication, there is n number of virions or the, vi or the virus particles are being produced, the viral proteins are being produced which are initially inactive and later they become active and get assembled. Once they get assembled, they go and gets uh, does the budding to that of the host cell which finally gets released from the host cell. So, it is quite simple. The genomic material is in released into the host cell which replicates and finally uh, gets assembled and again goes for budding and uh, exits from the host cell to go and again attack the neighboring cell. So, this is how the simple pathogenesis occur. So, the main site of the target of this dreadful virus is the alveoli which are present in the lungs. Okay? So, the alveoli has actually has the lungs, the uh, alveoli in the lungs actually has two types of cells, the type 1 and type 2. So, the type 1 pneumocytes are actually responsible for the gaseous exchange whereas type 2 pneumocytes secrete the pulmonary surfactant. Okay? So, these are the main two types of cells where this cell um, virus targets. Among these two, in the early stage, the type 2 pneumocytes are mainly affected and as the uh, later stages, the type 1 are also affected, but in the early stage of the disease, the type 2 pneumocytes are mainly affected. Okay? So, as I said, so this is simple pathogenesis again. So, as I said, the COVID-19 affect the 
type 2 pneumocytes and damages that. So, once they get damaged, it releases the inflammatory mediators which activate the alveolar macrophages. These are activated alveolar macrophages will release the cytokines, especially the tumor necrosis alpha, the interleukin 1 and interleukin 6. Okay? Once these are being released, then the capillaries which are present around the alveoli, they end up with endothelial contraction and retraction finally causes vasodilatation because of which there will be increase in capillary permeability once the capillary permeability increases which are present around the alveolus the fluid from the capillaries enters into the interstitial space and again the fluid from the interstitial space can enter the alveolus or the alveoli so because of which it results in pulmonary edema so this is how the pulmonary edema occurs okay we will again discuss this so as i said so this uh, particular dreadful virus that is coronavirus affect the type 2 pneumocytes in the early stage of the disease these type 2 pneumocytes are responsible to release the surfactant and maintain the surface tension so as they are damaged there is decrease in the surfactant because of which the surface tension gets increased that finally the co causes the collapse of the alveolus which results in the decrease of gaseous exchange so finally it results in a condition which is called as hypoxemia that is the concentration of the oxygen in the blood decreases and the person has to meet the uh, increased demand of oxygen because of which the alveoli gets inflated and the work of the breathing increases so wb is nothing but the work of breathing okay and next is after the uh, cytokines are being released they attract the neutrophils into the scene these neutrophils release the reactive oxygen species and proteases which again damage both type 1 and type 2 as the type 1 pneumocytes are responsible for gaseous exchange so the, again the gaseous exchange is affected because of which the hypoxemia occurs so this is simple pathogenesis of how the type 2 and type 1 pneumocytes are damaged which results in the collapse of the alveolus okay so as we have discussed already so there is increased capillary permeability via which the fluid again enters into the alveoli causing the edema apart from that the cellular debris also enters into the alveolus because of which there it results in alveoli con consolidation so there is complete collapse and consolidation of the alveoli because of which it irritates mechanical irritation occurs and thus results in the respiratory symptoms like cough and shortness of breath okay this is the reason of why the patients affected with the dreadful coronavirus or the covid 19 shows the initial symptoms of the cough and shortness of breath okay next uh, and apart from this a few patients also present with runny nose okay next uh, why there is high fever in these patients is because these inflammatory mediators like the interleukins and the tumor necrosis factor they go and uh, affect the hypothalamus so they there the prostaglandins are released so they uh, 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 cause the hypothalamus to release the prostaglandins because of which the body temperature increases so that's the reason these patients will have high grade fever okay so we have understood of how the respiratory symptoms occur and also the how why the body temperature is being increased we know the prostaglandins are mainly responsible for the body temperature and the pyrogen center is present in the hypothalamus so these inflammatory mediators target the pyrogen center to release the prostaglandins that is especially the prostaglandin e2 and that's the reason the body temperature is being increased so clear next Apart from that, there is decrease in the oxygen levels and decreased pressure of oxygen because of which it triggers various chemoreceptors. These chemoreceptors go and activate the sympathetic nervous system. So, because of which when the sympathetic nervous system is activated, the force of it has a positive inotropic effect on the heart. So, the force of contraction of the cardiac muscles is activated because of which there is increased heart rate as well as increased respiratory rate in these patients in order to me, uh, meet the increased demand of oxygen okay that's the reason the vital signs of these patients have to be regularly monitored once they get admitted in the hospital clear so in these patients there is increased heart rate and increased respiratory rate in order to meet the oxygen demand and also because of the activation of the sympathetic system okay so 
and eventually if the patient is left untreated and if he is not under any supportive therapy then it results in multi organ failure. Why? Because there is increased capillary permeability because of which as I said the fluid escapes into the interstitial space and there is redu uh, reduced uh, blood volume in the particular blood vessel because of which there is reduced peripheral resistance followed by which it results in hypotension and reduced organ perfusion. So, it eventually ends up with the multi organ failure. So, the patients will die because the multi organs almost all the organs are being affected and the patient cannot compensate that because of which the death rate has been occurred in this particular virus. Okay? So, that is the reason once the patient is being admitted in the hospital, the regular liver function and the kidney function test has to be monitored. Okay? So, uh, the uh, liver function test or so the patients if it is left untreated then it, they show increased uh, SGOT, SGPT as well as bilirubin and act, uh, acute phase proteins like CRP and all that. Apart from that the renal function test they also they can show increased blood urea nitrogen and serum creatinine. So, they have to be regularly monitored in order to know the functions of these organs. Apart from that the patient in case if there is uh, severe pulmonary edema. So, the patient has to be put under ventilation and intensive care so that he can breathe properly. Okay? So, so far we are done with how the respiratory symptoms occur, how the fever occurs, how the vital signs are being increased and also how the multi organ failure occur. Okay? Now, what are the tests that are being done to know this virus is uh, the incubation period of this virus is ac exactly about uh, 2 to 14 days and the test is that is being used is a real time reverse transcriptase PCR that is polymerase chain reaction. So, this is very important that you need to remember. So, the main differences between the throat swab and the blood test. So, throat swab is usually taken. So, uh, the main difference is the throat swab for the result to come it takes about days whereas for the blood test it takes only few seconds or minutes. And um, in the throat swab the P PCR is being used whereas in blood test the solution is added in order to test the device. Later the throat swab it actually looks for the coronavirus genetic material whereas uh, the blood test shows or it detects antibodies which are produced by the human body in order to fight or combat this virus. Okay? So, these are the main differences. So, in case if the throat swab has shown that antigenic material of the virus then the patient is said to be positive. If the blood test shows the antibodies then it is uh, like it shows that even the patient must be infected in the past or in the present. So, both the tests are being done nowadays in order to come to a conclusion. Okay? So, what are the various treatment modalities that have been amplified or being practiced but there is no 100 percent treatment yet. Uh, so, uh, initially they have used oseltamivir which is a neuron amidase inhibitor. It was a drug of choice for the pandemic swine flu. It uh, that flu with tablet which we usually give for the flu patients it consists of oseltamivir but it was not that effective in treating this particular virus. But when combined with some other protease inhibitors and chlorpheniramine it has shown better results but still it is under trial. But the chloroquine which is an anti-malarial drug especially in India, it is, has shown a better result when compared to other drugs. Okay? Why? Because it has its own uh, mechanism of action. So, mainly this uh, spike proteins which I said the spikes of the virus actually they exactly bind to the ACE2 receptors that is angiotensin converting 2 receptors which are present on the pneumocytes especially the type 2. So, they bind these spikes go and bind to the ACE2 receptors on the pneumocytes. So, this drug is said that it can block that binding or can block that fusion. Okay, so, one of the reason is that and one of the other reason could be it has a very good or uh, anti-inflammatory property that it can have a effect on tumor ne uh, necrosis factor as well as interleukins. It has very good anti-inflammatory property. So, because of which it can reduce the severity of the disease. So, these are the could, these could be the one or uh, two reasons, these could be one of the many reasons uh, for the treatment of uh, for giving this hydroxychloroquine for treatment for treating coronavirus. But it has its own complications and side effects, it can cause cardiac abnormalities as well as the contraindications include the like myocardial infarction and all that. So, the dosage of the drugs has to be uh, monitored before giving to the patient and uh, uh, all the vital signs and the important things have to be monitored. Okay? And uh, since this drug is being 
showing better results as a reason prime minister modi have been asked to export this drug to several other countries so but still there is no 100% assurance that this drug is being is the cure for uh, this virus so it's not like 100% assured and apart from that nowadays we have been heard that the antibodies from the plasma of the cured patients or of the recovered patients have also been taken to treat the virus even that's under trial so we now it's the treatment is not like confirmed yet okay it's not the this is the treatment is like that is not yet confirmed so still many under trials uh, many human trials and many in vitro trials are being happening so let's see when the treatment comes out okay so i would like to conclude by saying that stay home stay safe but though being doctors the government might uh, ask us for rec rescue or help so we need to have a good idea of the pathogenesis and the test to what are being done and also the drugs that have been tried so that's the reason i have made this presentation so do have an idea students but i wish the government should never get that situation of asking help uh, i touch wood so many cases should not increase and they should not need a help actually but in case if that happens so we need to have a idea okay till then stay home stay safe okay thank you